The game is based on the Chinese novel, Journey to the West which is said to be inspired by a true story. Wukong is a fictional character who creates chaos in the celestial court, defeating everyone who comes his way. Eventually, everyone prayed to the Buddha Visata who replied to their request and trapped Wukong under a mountain. Tang Monk was the one who freed Wukong but he was also scared by the evil monkey so he put a headband on him to control him. The headband could only be removed after Wukong had successfully retrieved all the scriptures for his master. After his journey to the west, Wukong gets the title of victorious fighting Buddha and gets the gift of immortality again. As promised, the headband is removed from his head and he has to live in the celestial court after achieving Buddhahood but he only wants to live a peaceful life in Mount Huaguo. Living on Mount Huaguo, between the beautiful clouds, Wukang's hopes to live a peaceful life are shattered when the celestial gods surround his residence with their army. Leaving his peaceful territory, he goes to face the army waiting for him and delivers his legendary speech about how he has already saved his master and the scriptures and just wishes to live a peaceful life on his mountain, away from all this drama. He understands the celestial beings make him submit but they shouldn't have killed his kind while fulfilling their ill intentions. Just as he finishes speaking, a celestial god Erlang comes forward to face him and gives him the message from higher ups, threatening that his hideout will be destroyed in any case so he should just admit defeat. Wu Kang just laughs at his empty threats, saying how his big talk amuses him and it will be even more entertaining if he can take out his extra eye for fun, generously letting him keep the other two so he can see others getting killed. Then without any fear, Wu Kang challenges, all the celestial gods and their armies to attack him at once. Taking up on his challenge, Erlang suddenly attacks him, saying how many people are dying to give everything so they can be immortal. Wu Kong is unfazed by the reminder, instead saying how many people ruin their lives just because of this word. Their conversation ends as they start attacking each other, swiftly moving their magical spears, and hitting each other with lightning bolts. One particular hit from Erlang, shakes the ground, causing all the celestial beings around them to move toward him. Instead of taking everyone in the fight, Wukong challenges Erlang to fight him in the woods and then turns into a blackbird, intending to fly away from there, followed by Erlang. He can't go far as he finds out that he still has the magical band on his head and someone must have activated it because he suddenly starts to fall through the air. During his fall, he changes back to his original self and Erlang also regains his real appearance. Wu Kang doesn't have a chance to gather himself as Erlang delivers one final strong hand. Wu Kang falls to his death, causing the mountain where he falls to shatter into pieces. Somewhere else in the mountains, an elderly monkey man is narrating the story of how Wu Kang only wanted freedom and even managed to achieve Buddhahood but he struggled to follow the celestial rules. He only wished to live a simple life with his people but he wasn't aware that his choice to ignore the life above only makes the celestial beings more suspicious about him. The elderly monkey gently touches a stone, saying how this stone is where the Wukong remains are saved and even though his body was torn during the fight, his soul has borne all the pain. After the fight, Wukang left behind six relics, that are hidden in some unknown spots. Even though these relics are the six senses of the great sage, no one has found anything in centuries. Standing on the edge of the mountain, the elderly monkey says to a younger one how he can't wander around the land to find those pieces but he knows that one of them will fulfill this task and will gather the six relics. Once all these relics are gathered on the mountain Huaguao, the great sage Wukang will rise again. Somewhere deep in the jungle, two wolves are leisurely walking when they find a peach and bite into it, accidentally freeing a monkey warrior hidden inside. The chosen one, a young monkey visits a small, hidden temple in the forest where he meets a small dwarf man who is the keeper of Blackwind Mountain. As soon as the man sees him, he comments how he looks just like the great sage and that this place has been waiting for him for a long time. The dwarf tells him that ahead of this place is the Guanian temple which had a lot of worshippers until it was destroyed by the legendary fire. Just then they hear something howling. The dwarf comments that nobody has forgotten about the great sage and then disappears, leaving the chosen one to fend for himself. Despite disappearing at first, the dwarf freezes the monster using his immobilized spell and then gifts this spell to the chosen one so he can use it in his future fights. Once he has defeated the bull guard, the dwarf returns and turns him into a golden cicada so he can easily escape from there. Soon after that, he defeats another monster, the Yao Guai King Ling Suzi in the Guanyin Temple. He meets an elderly man after that who claims that he knows a way to help the souls mend their path and set them free. The elderly man also bestows a gift to the chosen one, saying that it will help him guide the lost souls. Continuing his journey, the chosen one defeats the two Yaogui chiefs and white-clad noble who advises him to forget the things he is searching, for before disappearing. The chosen one finally comes face to face with the old Jinchi, who can't see him and by only smelling his odor, mistakes him for Wukang. 
The elder Jinchi regrets spending his life collecting the Kasayas and still can't get his hand on Wukong's Kasaya. The Chosen One continues to wander in the abandoned temple, defeating another monster called the Black King who claims that he was the one who restored this temple after every monk was burned in the fire. The old dwarf returns as the Chosen One faces the Black Bear who tells them that he is just a pawn in this game and there is someone else pulling the strings. Many years back, a young Jinchi was wandering in the jungle one day when he met with Black Bear Yaguai who had shown him the gold he had collected, transferring his own greed into that child. Jinchi was a junior monk in the Guanyin Temple but as time passed he became the head monk of the temple with the help of Black Bear Yaguai, who also used magic to increase his lifespan. For many years, Jinchi lived peacefully in the temple and it was his hobby to collect the different Kasayas, which eventually became an obsession. One of these days, Wu Kang and his friend Sangzong visited the temple. Jinchi was intrigued by the beautiful Kasaya that Sangzong was wearing but since he couldn't ask for it directly, he asked for suggestions from his disciples. They tell him to borrow the Kasaya for one night and then burn the place where Sangzong is staying but their plan doesn't work because Wu Kang has found out what they are going to do. Wu Kang has turned around the whole scenario as he uses his powers to divert the fire to other parts of the temple, to save his friend Sangzong. They both safely escape from the temple, while the whole place is burnt to the ashes killing many monks in the process. Once upon a time, Jin Chanzi was the second disciple of Buddha in the West and could lead a good life. However, due to his arrogance, he ignored the Dharma teachings, which sent him to the mortal realm, where he had to face many trials, the legendary fire being one of them. A headless man is singing a song in the desert, about how in the Yellow Wind Ridge, there was a happy kingdom known as Sahali that was filled with gold. People were living there happily until the place was ruined by a giant insect named Fuban, the king got kicked out of his place, and the evil started running free in the kingdom. At the time, Wu Kong went to Bodhisattva to beg him to grant some peace to the kingdom. The peace didn't last long as the kingdom faced another disaster soon when the cursed beasts started killing everyone. Lying near a rock, the chosen one wakes up due to the singing and as soon as the man notices him, he helps him recover quickly already knowing why he came here. When the chosen one stands up, the man disappears while singing about how the rats were the only residents left in that kingdom. In the abandoned mountains, the Chosen One meets a wolf who gifts him some common pills and then disappears. Continuing his journey, the Chosen One meets his first opponent, the second rat prince, the king of flowing sands, and his son. The second prince is telling his son that they need to survive here until their master returns but their plan fails when the Chosen One shows up there, and defeats them. The singing man returns, still continuing his story while the rat prince uses his blood to lure the first prince of flowing sand out from his hiding spot in a ditch. He is hoping that the monster will help him but instead, it eats him first and then faces the Chosen One, who defeats him. The next monster that the Chosen One faces is the Tiger Vanguard. After he defeats him in the pool of blood, the singing man tells him how the tiger has deceived everyone into attacking a stone but they couldn't do any harm to it. The man then hits him with something, upgrading his armor as he says how the Chosen One is perfect for the art of rock solid. Using the given gift, the Chosen Monkey activates a giant lion head, that drinks all the blood from the pool just as the singing man returns and gives him another gift. As the chosen ones move forward, he defeats the black long monster and finally meets with the yellow wind sage. The inevitable fight between the chosen one and the yellow wind sage ends in the monkey's victory. As the monster fell to the ground, he was holding a head in his hand. Just then the singing man comes there and picks up the head, revealing that he is the bodhisattva Lingji. Lingji tells the chosen one how the yellow wing sage has stolen one of Wukong's relics, and was planning to use it for malicious plans but couldn't bear its power. After finishing the story, Bodhisattva gives Wukong's relic to the Chosen One as a thank you. Somewhere in the snowy mountains, a man is traveling alone when he meets an injured wolf who brings him home. After nursing the injured wolf, he falls asleep and dreams about having a happy family that was killed by the wolf he has rescued. When he wakes up, he is relieved to find that it was all just a dream, but in his sleep, he has killed the injured wolf and continues his journey carrying the dead wolf on his shoulder. Somewhere in the mountains, a kid, the yellow brow is looking at some statues with a mocking smile on his face and turns himself into a statue just as someone else passes from there. This is the place from where the Chosen One continues his journey and meets with the macaque chief there, who thinks that the Chosen One will gain nothing from this journey but he doesn't stop him, respecting his wish to continue. He leads the Chosen One to a temple, telling him that the thing he is searching for is here and he should take it while the master of this land is still away. The Chosen One is still trying to take a good look at this new location when the Yelwa Brow descends down from the stairs of the temple saying how when Wu Kang was alive, he was always whining and now after his death, he is sending his younglings. He then brings out a dragon named Kang Jin Lung from his sack and the thing attacks the Chosen One but he easily defeats him. 
suddenly the elder monkey that has led the chosen one here attacks him and he loses consciousness. When he wakes up again, he is lying in an underground jail in the pagoda realm. After escaping from the jail, the chosen one meets a man who teaches him a trick to start a fire which will help him when he is injured or suffering from frostbite. The chosen one comes out on the snowy mountains and overhears a conversation between a woman and her lover, the admiral. She is trying to convince him to go with her but he refuses instead asking her to join him. The woman says that she will even ask the master to free him and then they can be together. The admiral doesn't agree with him and instead starts talking about how the master used Wu Kang's relic well and how he thinks the destined one has unlocked the many wheel. The woman is not happy with his stubbornness but just then the ground starts shaking as a giant turtle comes out of the water, after catching the smell of the destined one. The woman, Yao Guai Queen Kang Jin thinks that he is being ungrateful because the master has spared his life for his own good. The chosen one fights against the queen, who eventually turns into her dragon form but he easily defeats her. Once he is standing there alone again, a small pig named Baji comes there and instantly starts scolding him for coming there so late. Baji first kicks the injured dragon, talking about how he doesn't even like to look at it in celestial court, and then turns toward the chosen one, irritated by how he can't speak. He starts talking to the turtle about how he will take revenge on him and his other friend Snake. Baji then goes inside the temple where he meets the young monk, Maitreya who starts talking about how they should worship the Buddha because it is the true path. Baji laughs at his comment, unfazed by the lecture, and just wants to know the path but when the kid points out in front of him, the only thing he sees is endless mountains. When Maitreya refuses to reveal the path clearly, Baji announces that he will find it himself and tells the chosen one to go ahead while he fulfills his task. The chosen one goes inside the chamber of the temple where he meets with Yellow Brow again who tells him how he was once friends with Jin Chanzi. Jin Chanzi didn't agree with his opinion that they as celestial beings are superior to others and believe that everyone is equal. Due to his opinion, Jin Chanzi was punished with reincarnation and took three disciples but they all met with the same fate. Suddenly the doors to the temple close as the Yellow Brown turns into his original form and forces the Chosen One to kneel in front of him. This time the Chosen One struggles to hold his ground and falls into a strange underground hall where he meets with Baji again. After a fierce fight, the Chosen One finally defeats the Yellow Brow. The Yellow Brow keeps mumbling about how the Chosen will face his end while moving to the frozen lake where he falls inside and is eaten by the fish that he has created. Just then the young former Maitreya appears there and tells them how the Yellow Brow has stolen Wukong's relic. He also took the kid's identity so he could deceive his old enemies. Maitreya now believes that this monkey is really the Chosen One and is talking about how he is great but is rudely interrupted by Baji who says that they can't let the relic sink with Yellow Brow. Using his powers, Maitreya helps them retrieve the relic from the lake and gives it to them. They are not happy that their mother has suffered so much because of Baji but still want to be with him. Baji is almost forced into the fake marriage but the Chosen One rescues him from there. Once they are far from there, the Chosen One gives him a mirror but when Baji sees his old reflection in the mirror he quickly throws it away. Later they meet with Baji's wife, Violet Spider again and she argues with him about how he always cared about these monkeys more. The Violet Spider puts a small spider on the ground which turns into a young girl who looks frightened of all this ordeal. Eventually, the Violet Spider gets furious by their argument and attacks them but is defeated by the Chosen One. She runs away from there and Baji tells the Chosen One to follow her since she has the relic. Following her, the Chosen One finds her in a garden where the Violet Spider, her daughters, and a man called the Hundred-Eyed Taoist are gathered. The Taoist Master knows that the Violet Spider has a relic inside her and snatches it out of it, draining all of her energy in the process. The Chosen One eventually defeats the Taoist Master, and the Violet Spider also takes her last breaths while her daughters gather around her, crying for their loss. Back in the time, Baji was living in the Celestial Court as a beautiful young man and used to chase after women. When he catches the sight of the silver-haired moon goddess, he runs after her but instead bumps into a handmaiden, dressed in a violet robe and falls in love with her. One day he accidentally witnesses the secret meeting of the moon goddess with Jade Emperor. Jade's emperor is furious when he spots Baji looking at them and throws him into the mortal world. While falling into the mortal world, Baji's spirit resides in a pig's body instead of a human. After he left the celestial world, his lover decided to follow after him. In the mortal world, he finds the woman who looks like his lover and chases after her forgetting that he has been turned into a pig. He is heartbroken when he sees his reflection in the water but as time passes, his lover returns to the world, this time reincarnated as the violet spider. When he reunites with his lover, they live happily together but it doesn't last long because Bajie has to leave her to fulfill his duties in the celestial court. In the woods of Amber, 
Baji and the Chosen Ones fight some zombies as Baji shares how he has guarded the Celestial River with his 80,000 disciples so this doesn't affect him. He then leaves there so he can take care of these deceptive creatures and tells the Chosen One to go ahead without him. Following his instructions, the Chosen Ones continue their journey and find a fox trapped in a tree. The fox begs him for help, telling him how she has barely escaped from an attack in the mountains and will be grateful for his help. Just then the two giant heads appear there, and the Chosen One fights against them first before freeing the fox who turns into a beautiful woman. Baji finally returns and is sure that the girl is just deceiving them by faking its appearance. The girl ignores him and instead turns to the Chosen One, telling him how she is Bull King's daughter Ping Ping, and lives with his stepmother Rakshi and her son. At first, they lived a peaceful life but soon her brother changed and Aaron effect get a coup against the Bull King. Baji tries to tell the Chosen One that she is just fooling him but when she continues to beg him for help, the Chosen One decides to follow her. The Chosen One turns into a cicada and overhears Ping Ping's conversation with her stepmother. Ping Ping begs her mother for the fan, insisting that she will save her father's life by using that but her mother also thinks that she is secretly with her brother. As they are arguing a man comes there, and lures Rakshi into thinking that he is the only one who can help him because the destined one has arrived. They ignore Ping Ping's protest, as Rakshi starts to talk about how she misses the good times they spent together. She gently holds the man's hand while her own hands turn into a hoof, revealing that he is actually Baji. The man is furious that his plan failed like this and is eventually defeated by the Chosen One. Later Ping Ping takes the Chosen One to the Burning Valley and shows him how her mother's fan can actually put out the fire. Baji still had some suspicions about her but eventually gave up. Turning into the giant pig, he fights against the bull who has suddenly attacked them and falls into a pit. The Chosen One is worried about his friend but Ping assures him that nothing will happen to Baji and then takes him to meet her father. When they meet with the Bull King, he is not fooled by Ping's act and she finally reveals her true identity, turning into the Bull King's son, Red Boy. After a short fight, the Chosen One defeats the Red Boy but the Bull King knows that his son is not dead. And takes out the relic, wanting to give it to the Chosen One. When he throws it toward the monkey, the Red Boy snatches it in mid-air and quickly swallows it. Baji finally returns there and sees that his suspicions about the Red Boy are true. After eating the relic, the Red Boy has turned into Yaksha King. Baji is furious at Red Boy for how he deceived him and decides to fight against the Red Boy himself. Before he can actually kill him, Rakshi appears there and begs them to spare her son's life because he is the last one from Yaksha's line and promises to go into meditation with her whole family. Her words are left unheard as the Red Boy kills himself, leaving his grieving mother behind. In ancient times, Bull King and Wukong were good peers, but their friendship was ruined when Rakashi refused to give her fan to Wukong to help him pass through the Flaming Valley. At the time Bajie has killed Bull King's second wife, making him furious. His anger only simmered down when in the Celestial Court, Prince cuts his head. When Wukong was dying, he took his last breaths in the Bull King's lap, telling him to look after his family and steer clear of his remains. The Chosen One and Baji continue on their journey, finally nearing their destination. Baji says to the monkey that they need to rush since they will reach the home soon and the old monkey will be waiting for them there. They have already gathered the five relics and the old monkey has the sixth one. They have to stop when they meet a dead end and have to fight some monsters before they can move forward. When they finally reach Mount Huaguo, the Chosen One faces the cloud-treading deer and defeats it but Baji insists that he get the last hit. As the Chosen One defeats every celestial monster that comes in his way, he is given the pieces of gold armor, that slowly fits on his body. Baji is surprised when he recognizes that the gold armor is Wukong's Swaozi armor. As they continue to move forward, the Chosen One fights an emerald-armed mantis in Baji's stomach. They then go to the kingdom of Wukong, where Baji recreates his first meeting with his friend, laughing at the fond memories. There the Chosen One claims Wukong's staff that was parked there in a giant form. The duo finally reaches the top of Mount Huaguo, where they were supposed to find Wukong but the place is completely empty. When they both touch the rock, they are suddenly transported into Wukong's obsession realm and meet with the old monkey there. The old monkey tells them to get on the boat with him and then recalls the story of how Wukong nearly ruined the celestial palace because he wasn't invited to a feast. Baji and the old monkey discuss Wukong's actions, giving their respective opinion on whether he was right or wrong. While recalling the past memories, the old monkey eventually reveals that there is no sixth relic, because the sixth relic was Wukong's mind which was distorted when he turned into a rock. Wu Kong wanted to get rid of his evil mind to get a new one and his wish came true in the form of a destined one, who is the reincarnation of Wu Kong without his evil mind. Bajie is having a hard time believing all this but the old monkey says that deep down he must have known what is happening around him. 
The last step is to beat the stone body of Wu Kong so it can be proven that the destined one is truly able. Baji doesn't want to send the chosen one there alone and even keeps shouting at him that he doesn't need to bear the burden of Wu Kong's name. Ignoring his words, the chosen one faces the stone monkey who snatches all the relics from him, which gives him similar powers to Wu Kong. Eventually, the stone monkey is defeated, and the headband he is wearing falls into the bottom of the river. It turns out that Wukong's sole mission was to get rid of the headband, and he finally succeeded by transferring all his sense into the destined one. People still talks about the monkey who was granted the Buddhahood, some believing it to be true while the others think it was just an old tale.